Anywhere you turn to in the universe holds many secrets, and with the increasing sophistication of the equipment we have access to, we have been discovering many of them. However, the more we find out, the clearer it becomes that there is so much more. In this video, we bring you the deep mysteries from space and on Earth. We will start with how physicists at CERN just made an incredible discovery that literally changes everything. It isn't every day that you discover a new particle, so you can imagine the excitement in the scientific community when there was the announcement of the emergence of a new particle at CERN. The new exotic particle discovered by physicists from the LHCb collaboration at CERN's Large Hadron Collider LHC, contains two quarks and two antiquarks. Labeled TCC+, it is the longest-lived exotic particle ever discovered, and the first to have two heavy quarks and two light antiquarks. It is understandable if you have never heard of quarks as particles, but they are the fundamental building blocks from which matter is constructed. They combine to form hadrons, namely baryons such as the proton and the neutron, which consist of three quarks, and mesons formed as quark-antiquark -quark pairs. Several tetraquark particles have been discovered in recent years, but TCC Plus is the first one that contains two charm quarks without charm antiquarks to balance them. Physicists call this open charm, in this case, double open charm. Particles containing a charm quark and a charm antiquark have hidden charm, that is, the charm quantum number for the whole particle adds up to zero, just like a positive and negative electrical charge do. But here the charm quantum number adds up to two, which has twice the charm. TCC plus is also the first particle to be found that belongs to a class of tetraquarks with two heavy quarks and two light antiquarks. Such particles decay by transforming into a pair of mesons, each formed by one of the heavy quarks and one of the light antiquarks. According to some theoretical predictions, the mass of tetraquarks of this type should be very close to the sum of masses of the two mesons. Such proximity in mass makes the decay difficult, resulting in a longer lifetime of the particle, and indeed, TCC plus is the longest-lived exotic hadron found to date. The new TCC plus tetraquark is an enticing target for further study. The particles that it decays into are all comparatively easy to detect, and in combination with the small amount of the available energy in the decay, this leads to an excellent precision on its mass and allows the study of the quantum numbers of this fascinating particle. The finding will help physicists better understand the complex ways in which quarks bind themselves together into composite particles, such as the ubiquitous protons and neutrons that are found inside atomic nuclei. The next discovery is better classified as heartbreaking, even though it happened millions of miles away on another planet. When you spend billions of dollars sending a rover to a planet like Mars, you tend to try to squeeze out as much value for your money. Sure, NASA has notched many high-profile successes on the red planet, but sometimes the unforgiving terrain of Mars throws scientists a curveball. The Perseverance rover came up empty during its first attempt to collect a sample of Martian rock, which should have been a routine task. During this attempt, the multi-step sampling process initially seemed to progress smoothly. The rover bored into the red planet, closed the sample tube with an airtight seal, and safely deposited the tube into a module in the rover's belly. Jennifer Trosper, project manager for the Perseverance mission, admitted the system worked perfectly. But when the time came for the team to go through the data, they realized the tube was empty. During tests conducted on Earth, some of the cores were smaller than others, but they always got some sample in the tube. However, the failed sample-grabbing attempt joins several past missions that have struggled to dig into the red rocks of Mars as planned. A self-hammering heat probe on Mars's InSight lander, for example, only managed to sink an inch or so deep into the surface before popping back out. Also, NASA's Phoenix lander, which touched down on Mars in 2008, initially struggled to scoop the planet's rusty red regolith into a device that heats the rocks to sniff out their components. The material was more sticky than expected, and the rocks didn't easily fall from the scoop. Scientists being scientists still debate why till this day. While Mars may be a frigid desert, signs of past water abound from winding stream channels to sprawling river deltas. Perseverance touched down on Mars in February 2021 to search for clues of ancient life in a 28-mile-wide crater that was probably once filled with a freshwater lake. A crucial part of this search is collecting the first pristine samples from Mars's surface. 
The Perseverance is fitted with 43 ultra-clean sample tubes, which will be used to collect dozens of samples across the crater floor and up through an ancient river delta. The rover would then cache the samples in a yet undetermined place so that a future mission can scoop them up and return them to Earth. Collecting samples on Mars is no joke as it involves a choreographed and coordinated series of events that take up 11 days. The scientists begin by scouring a patch of the surface which clears away any dust or coatings and allows them to study the makeup of the underlying rock. The final stage of Perseverance's first sample attempt began the evening of August 5th after the team issued commands for the automated process to start. They awoke the following morning at 2 a.m. to check Perseverance's progress and confirmed it had successfully drilled into the surface. An image showed precisely what they expected, a hole surrounded by a ring of sand known as tailings. Around 8.30 a.m., the team received photos of a successfully sealed tube inside the rover. But then they looked at the rest of the data. Before the tube was sealed, an arm inside the rover pushed it upward into a sensor to measure the volume of material, revealing nothing in sight. The team then downloaded images looking down into the tube to confirm that it was empty. Over the next two days, the team set to figure out what went wrong. Snapshots showed a suspicious pile of dust at the bottom. Measurements of the hole's depth and images of the surrounding area further suggested that the rover hadn't simply dropped the small cylinder rock. The drill, it seems, instead ground the unexpectedly crumbly rock to bits. During the months of preparation before Perseverance launched, the team took more than 100 practice samples on Earth to try and ensure the process would go as planned. But when designing missions to other worlds, such as Mars, scientists often talk about the unknown unknowns, situations when something totally unexpected happens. The failed sample collection was just that. However, there is a silver lining to such nasty surprises as they provide an opportunity to discover something new, enabling the scientists to better prepare for future missions. Now, if you go to a beach, you will see many footprints that are perhaps several hours old on the sand. However, how about following in footsteps over a hundred thousand years old? A set of seven footprints made at a lake about 120,000 years ago have gained acclaim as the earliest evidence of modern humans on the Arabian Peninsula. Experts say this discovery could shed light on the spread of our species out of Africa. The path by which Homo sapiens spread worldwide was full of twists and turns. Genetic studies suggested it was not until 60,000 years ago that the migration of modern humans out of Africa led to a successful spread across Europe. However, it has been suggested that an incomplete skull found in Greece, dating back to more than 200,000 years ago, is from our species, while a 180,000-year-old Homo sapiens jawbone has previously been discovered in Israel. Meanwhile, scientists had previously discovered an 88,000-year-old finger bone in Arabia pointing to multiple early waves out of Africa. That find made experts conclude the Homo sapiens set out east beyond Israel far earlier than previously thought. Now, the discovery of the seven footprints in the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula in modern Saudi Arabia pushes this exploration to the east even further back in time. Professor Michael Petralia of the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History said the discovery was a story about the expansion of Homo sapiens into the heart of Arabia at an early date and not a story of coastal migrations. Explaining the conditions when the footprints were left, Richard Clark Wilson, a researcher from Royal Holloway University of London, said the area wouldn't have been hyper-arid. Instead, it would have been a grassy savanna with bodies of water offering opportunities for human migration. This is because human movements and animal movements tend to be linked to freshwater availability. The largest of the footprints appear to be from an elephant larger than any that tromp across the landscape today, but a closer look revealed the elongated prongs of camels and perhaps faint traces from giant buffalo and ancient horse relatives. The tracks were identified during a survey of ancient Lake Alathar, and scientists analyzed the system in a battery of tests. A study of ancient algae suggested it was once filled with fresh water, yet the waters were likely in the process of drying up, hinting that the track makers visited when the season was hot, perhaps chasing the dwindling resource around the region. Four of the seven hominin tracks cluster in a southerly route near the lake's edge, or likely left by two or three individuals. Both animals and humans seem to move without purposeful direction, congregating around the lake's shores. Based on modern experiments, all the footprints were likely left within hours or days. 
While people who walked by the lake have left their mark on history, their fate remains unknown. But Matthew Stewart of the Max Planck Institute for Chemical Ecology, another member of the research team, said it appears that people repeatedly dispersed into Arabia during more humid periods when expansive grasslands and lakes and rivers characterized the region. In the intervening periods when the deserts returned, the people either died out or retreated to more favorable places. Dr. Matthew Pope, an expert on ancient humans from University College London who was not involved in the work, agrees with the findings. He claims footprints are so incredibly evocative that they are brilliant for dissolving time barriers. While Pope said it was impossible to infer many details about the party from the prints, he said the work added to a shifting view of Arabia concerning the movement of Homo sapiens out of Africa. He said it was a productive landscape that could sustain human populations, which meant it could provide landscape for dispersal to happen. Let's hear what you think of scientists discovering more mysteries in the comments section below.